two minutes left on the clock. Dingley leading by three points against Bentley. Here comes Lambros running off the wing, receives the handball, launches a rocket from 60. Bang! He's dobbed it. The Dingley crowd erupts while Bentley is scratching their heads, wondering if they're in a Looney Tunes episode. Lambros, you cheeky genius. Welcome back to another game day vlog, everyone. This is absolutely massive. We've hit 700 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. That is amazing news for us. Now we're versing Bentley today. They're pretty poor, I think. All right, we're gonna smack them. But on another note, Steph behind the camera here has done a half marathon this morning. It is literally 9.14 and he's done a half marathon. So I want to introduce you guys to, he's not the cameraman, he's the other half of Lambros. Steph, tell them about the half marathon. Yeah, it was a tough morning down at Brighton Beach. We ran from Brighton all the way to Port Melbourne. But I'm absolutely dialed in to coach the 19 today and then watch Locke put on a clinic. I think he's going to drive it long and deep today. I think we're expecting 55 kilometer wins. I don't want to see any dinky kicks today, Locke. I want you to drive it long. Steph also cooked me up a mad steak tonight. Cut to that. And of course, as always, he usually cooks me breakfast, but unfortunately it was on a half marathon, as you guys just found out. So I had to make my own breakfast this morning, so it may not have been as good, but I'll show you that and I'll talk you through it. Ladies and gents, unfortunately, Steph isn't here at the moment. He's doing that half marathon, but we've cooked ourselves up a huge feed. You guys already know some scrambled eggs, chucked a bit of bacon there. So I thought we'd get a little bit fruity with it today. And obviously we've got a bit of fruit as well. Note that we don't have any bread there. No gluten, we want to avoid that before a game because it is very inflammatory to the gut, so we don't want that. We also don't have dairy as well because even though I'm lactose intolerant, if you aren't lactose intolerant, it's still not going to sit that well with you and it's just going to make you really full bloated and it's also inflammatory before a really big game. So make sure you get a really good breakfast in, arguably the most important meal on game day. Okay, it's time for some real talk. Now, a lot of footy influencers, so I don't want to pot anyone individually, but a lot of people have like wheat bix cereal, like bread before games of footy. And don't get me wrong, like this can get you through a game of footy really, really well. I did it for years and years, so I'm not saying like it's terrible, but I'm just going to say that it is definitely not optimal for your performance. And I want to take you back on a little bit of an embarrassing story of my own. So when I was younger, I used to have cereal for breakfast. I used to have wheat bix with a little bit of Nutrigrain on top. And the bigger the game was, you know, I've got to have more energy. I've got to pump in more calories. So I had more and more. Four or five years, I'd have so many bad games. The bigger the stage that it was, the more I would try to fuel myself. So the more milk I'd have, the more like cereal essentially. And then I'd feel sick and I would literally like shit my pants, which is like pretty embarrassing. But I hope at least a couple of you guys can relate to that. Moral of the story, don't have cereal before a game. It's not going to do you that well. I promise you that. You may be able to get through, but if you actually have like eggs, avocado, and really, really healthy fruits instead of like bread and, and milk and stuff like that, you're going to be so much better. Doing some pre-game preparation here, guys. And obviously, you know, the most important ingredient is the bee juice. We want to get about three teaspoons of bee juice. Second most important is the banana. So that's two hours before the game. I'm also sitting out with little Snow Bear. He's hanging out. Are we getting up today, Snow? Can you give everyone a high five? Yeah. There we go. There we go. And uh, yeah, just wearing bare feet as well. I woke up this morning and I just had like the urge to ground my feet into the earth. It's kind of like some spiritual type stuff. I heard it on a podcast and I think it's actually really good. So give it a go. Like just walk around bare feet into the earth and it kind of feels good. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. <laughs> no, we're not putting this in. Guys, we had a couple of people ask um, on Instagram DM, what was your biggest sporting achievement? Now, by an absolute country mile, I'm going to show you guys my biggest ever sporting achievement. Here we have it. Where are we? The Herald Sun Shield competition. So we won Div 1 Herald Sun Shield, a great achievement. And you guys already know, fruity socks, baby. Let's go. The fruitier, the better. Okay, guys, the haircut is done. Um, at the moment, it's equivalent to putting a bowl on your head and just clipping it. Not great. Um, yeah, but it's been working for me, actually, which is good news. And um, I'm listening to Machine Gun Kelly as we speak. Um, yeah, he's dating Megan Fox at the moment. So, yeah, if you guys want really good luck, like the video and you'll find someone like Megan Fox. <laughs> no, he's actually smacking it right now. Machine Gun Kelly, mate. 
You're an absolute king. I think we lost our way a little bit just with our ball use. I think we were getting it up in the footy, but we're sort of just blazing away with it. This quarter, boys, against the win. It's really important. At the contest, boys, we've got to hunt. We've got to hunt and we've got to put that pressure on. Fuck off, mate. What have you done? <laughs> Because that's a sign of ligament damage. It is an hour before the game. It's an hour before the game, unless he's got a sausage roll. Mate, what is this about? Uh, it just helps me channel my inner dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, track. Show us the haircut. Oh, mate. I look like Slim Shady with the receding hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another game day vlog, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed the commentary at the start of this video. Steph made that little segment there, and that was so good. I was absolutely pissing myself when I first heard it. But we're versing Bentley today. I just handballed the ball out, and we're wearing the clash jumpers. Let me know what you guys think about these red clash jumpers. For some reason, when our team plays in them, we never play as well. So they're nowhere near as good as the black ones, but, you know, they have to deal with it. Anyways, that's me, number six. I'm playing on the wing today, blonde mullet with the headband. That's apparently how I've been described lately at a lot of high schools, the blonde kid with the mullet. So, you know, it's not the worst description in the world. I will take it. Um, and that's just me getting a little chip kick. Try to get around this bloke. I did get around him, took the tackle, and then I kind of butchered that. So, continuing the trend of butchering the footy. <laughs> nah, genuinely, this game, the wind was ridiculous. So the date that we played this game is the 17th of June. So if anyone played on this date, you will know the week. It was so windy, genuinely like 60 kilometer winds blowing down to the right side of the ground. So I've just got the little cheeky handball out there and I'm pretty G'd up for this game. Like I had a coffee before the game. You guys saw my pre-game meal and I'm absolutely buzzing, ready to go. Our midfield is dialed in and the whole team was pretty up and about. So it's a really, really good feeling. The Bentley team who we're playing against have a pretty small side. Got the ball there and left foot bang. Could have, could have probably put it a bit more to the right. Like wasn't the worst kick, but was a turnover obviously. But yeah, back to Bentley. They do have a young side and we did underestimate them. We thought we'd come out and just smack them. And I don't know if you guys just saw the scoreboard there, but it's 27 to two and we're literally in the first quarter. So this game so far is looking absolutely dreadful, even though they have the wind. Dust up, some people commenting Prime Train on my videos. So yeah, hopefully hopefully Prime actually comments on one of these videos. I think he commented on the first one, but yeah, I know he's mates with Freezer. Nathan Freeman plays now midfield. He's a gun AFL player. Uh, just got the handball out there. Um, but yeah, he's best mates with Freezer. So apparently he's a really good bloke. I'm sure he is a good bloke and a lot of the stuff he does, like when he gives it back to the crowd and stuff, you know, it's just for the it's just for the views. So you got to respect the man in that case. So just tag Prime and see if he comments. Dingley, we are getting smacked in this first quarter, 40 to 8. So we are literally five goals down. Um, and I've just got the ball here at the start of the second quarter. I'm thinking, I've actually got to have an influence here. And you'll see me just set up goal after goal to start this quarter. Generally, I think I set up the first three or four goals in this quarter. So we actually marked that ball that went in then and we got a goal. So that was the first one I set up and I was pretty pumped up. So I knew that I had to run. I was copping some shit from the Bentley under 19s. I think it was their under 19s, maybe a couple of twos players as well, but they were all a great bunch of blokes. So I burst through that pack there, got a handball. And that just goes to show if you are fast, keep working on your speed and work on like driving through packs because if you can like draw two blokes to you, even if you're not the one to necessarily take the bounce, it will still be so good for your team. So I've got a mark here and I've gone back to kick the goal. I'm about, I think the mark's about 52 meters out and uh, you guys have been, you know, commenting on my goal kicking because I have missed a couple goals. So I'm going back here thinking, this has to go through. This one absolutely has to. And one of the comments was saying like, land on the foot that you like don't kick it with. So land on my left foot if I'm kicking my right foot. I go back, keen as, and I miss hit it again, bro. I was so pissed at this point. Like 
I just wanted some reward for my effort because I've been working my absolute bottom off this first half and I was so salty about that. But, you know, if you do miss a goal, just keep your head up, you know, try to direct your teammates to the next contest and just keep keep pushing, you know. It's not, it's not the end of the world. Like, it really isn't that big of a deal at all. And I just... Broke another tackle there, did a little blind turn, but it didn't turn off for the uh, didn't turn out for the boys, which is alright. Um and they actually got yeah, I think a point from that maybe. Oh no, we, we drove it out, which oh no, it wasn't a point, yeah. So that wasn't the best, but you know, we we're still dealing with it. Um and this is me here, handball receive, saw him come in and then swung back onto the left. I actually hit it well. And I thought Fraser was going to mark that, but the wing kind of just took it over his head. But it wasn't too bad. Like, wasn't too fussed about that one there. Um, that's actually a bad habit of mine. I do swing back onto my left foot sometimes. Like, I should kind of dodge to the left and then swing back on my right. But I guess it is a little bit unpredictable to the opposition. So, you definitely don't mind that. You can see the scoreboard here. We're literally within seven points. So, we've actually banged on, like, four goals. Or, and I think three goals something this quarter already. And a lot of that was actually my good play. Like, I have played a really, really good second quarter, and I'm pumped about it, man. So, uh, being Lambros, I am copying attention. I've ran away from this guy, and I've launched. Should have kicked it, and I missed again. Bro, I, that is two goals already. Gone absolutely begging. Like, if I've kicked two goals in this first half, like, you know, that would be just amazing, and I'd be so up, but... You know, you can't always you can't always kick him, so gotta just keep working, like gotta get my opportunities, and I was just grateful I got my opportunities. Now Sus this composure goes out, but on the inside of the foot hits news, and we got a goal from this as well. He went back and dobbed it. So that was good. That was really good by me. Um and just nice to get the composure up because it was such a windy day and hard to kick a tar like hit a target. I really don't think anyone had the best disposal efficiency throughout the day. Um, but coming back to the point I was talking about a minute ago, being Lambros on the field, I do cop a lot of attention now. So like pretty much every contest I'm at, playing on the wing or playing half back, like I am never by myself. Like if you're playing senior footy, you'll know that like your wingman will sit off the back of the stoppage. Usually your wingman or a high half back will actually be like pretty free at the contest. And I used to be free and I used to just get like, you know, I'd get like 40 touches, man, like just running ragged off a wing or half back. But now, like, people know that I'm just going to, like, like if they give me a bit of room, I'm just going to send it long and, like, just run. But So I don't really get that space anymore, which is a bit of a shame, but it's good for my development. And, I, you know, I don't mind getting a little bit of attention because it kind of keeps my head in the game. So I've just taken a mark here. I set up really well. And this is one thing that a lot of people can learn, especially if you're younger. Don't kick a long point. Hit the short one. Lockie Benton goes back and kicks that goal. That's one of the biggest learning points in this footage like there is nothing worse than kicking a long point in a game and what i mean by a long point is if you go back from like 70 meters or 65 try to kick a goal and it just like gets touched on the line like i probably could have almost made the distance there but the probability of getting it in wasn't the highest so if you can just find that little like 15 meters kick like the umpire's kick it is so much better so we're getting towards the end of the second here and i'm still working got a little tackle there kind of happy with the first half and we're up we are literally 30 13 points up the dingoes like we've had a massive second half like the second quarter sorry it was unreal got the ball here oh my god i almost missed my foot here sus this kick oh no, this, oh no i think i misbounced that one that's what happened that was so bad though um but i got it back and i kind of like um uh, like got around that guy and handballed it but man that's gonna happen if you take the game on and you are erratic like i am a pretty erratic player sometimes that kind of stuff will happen so it's not the absolute be all and end all it's not the worst thing in the world just kind of keep your head up Got the ball here, bro. Look how windy it was. I actually tried to bomb that and it literally went like 15 meters. Like, man, that actually sucked for me. Uh, I just, I hate that when like, there's no sound on the footage and then like, it just looks like you can't kick, but it, it really is windy. Uh, but that's all right. So this is me again and I've taken another bounce and I was driving my legs off the half back line. I was, my role this quarter was to play half back. Um, I've always played half back in my career, but this year I've been playing wing and the coach knew that I could play half back and he wanted me to just like stop him at all costs. And cause we knew this quarter was going to be the quarter that we won the game in. So I'm still working here, man. Still working around the ball. Um, 
around the contest, which is really good. As you can see there, got a little handball out back. I really wanted that one back, man. And then Sammy kicked it out of the bounds. Oh, I was pissed. But that's all right. Sammy is an absolute legend. He's on the Lambros training program, and he's playing the footy of his life at the moment. So hats off to the man. Absolute king. Um, now, if you are a young, that was me handball again, but if you are a younger player, oh, freezer with the volleyball tap, that was sick. Sorry, guys, I've got like OCD. I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm trying to like comment while I'm giving you guys some advice as well. Um, but if you are, you know, a player who is struggling to find form, especially earlier in the game, don't try to kick like a goal from the boundary and don't try to take on like a hundred blows. Like, because the chances are you're going to get pinned or you're going to miss and it's just going to set you up for a bad day. What you want to do to start a game of footy well is get really, really loud and get a really hard hit early, whether that be a tackle or a bump, and that's going to prime your um, sympathetic nervous system, so like your fight or flight, and your your fight mode is just going to be crazy. Just quickly, all those blokes, the 19s behind the goal for Bentley, I was copping it during this kick-in, so I just got it long. Um, but anyways, you really want to stimulate your nervous system it is so important like literally i couldn't emphasize the, the importance of it and this is just going to set you up for the rest of the day so before the game get like a teammate do like four tackles on each side four bumps on each side and then when you first start the game try to like get a bump on your opponent or a tackle it will help you out so much uh yeah don't know what happened there almost missed my foot wasn't the best but that's that's all right um, but yeah, back onto starting the game well, it, it is really important, especially if you're a momentum player. Like, I know a lot of the audience are, like, by the, ch the chances are, you probably are as well. Like, if you play your first half well, you probably won't have a good game. And that's, like, all right, man. Like, if you don't have a good first half, just go into the rooms and, like, do a couple of deep breaths and pretend that you're just playing the first half again. That's oh, something I need to work on as well, for sure. That's three quarter time there, and we are 15 points down. So it is going to be a hard last half uh, quarter that we know they're going to like jump on the ball and, and make it hard for us. Um, so I've got the ball here, taking a nice intercept mark. I'm playing on the wing again this quarter to try to win us the game. Going inside, and that guy just sharked us. So that was a really bad miss, but lucky they didn't get anything out of this play. But yeah, we're 15 points down, and they're kind of flooding. So we're actually almost a little bit concerned at this point thinking like oh my god we could actually lose to Bentley like this is not good at all um but yeah still working here in the middle and uh yeah like got like a little bit of a tackle there I know that my pressure needs to lift a little bit um I obviously do try to play more of an offensive role like clearly I'm trying to run with the footy and stuff like that but you know the defensive part's really important as well got the ball here kind of like merked in went back onto that left foot and just got it long, which is which is absolutely no problem at all. Sometimes if you're under the pump, just get the ball long and uh, your team can definitely pay the dividends. Windy days like this, dude, like seriously, I, I do like, you know, sometimes playing in a little bit of wet weather footy, but in wins like this, it's like, it's like you're not even playing footy. It's literally a different game. The tactics that go into it are so different. Uh, but it's it's good fun, you know. It, it is a little bit different, I must say. Uh, but it, it's good, you know. Um, just got a little tackle there. So, obviously, you can see my pressure's up. And, man, like, the game is so tight right now. Like, oh, I don't know. Uh, you guys obviously can't see the scores there. But we're literally, uh, like, oh, it'll be in the scoreboard here. We're literally three points up. And this guy just said this thing here, if you play in the middle and get tagged, this was Sir Daniel Brook, he pretty much said like a step backwards and then accelerate forward. And this is exactly what I did in this contest, man. And this is what happened. Like, bro, you're a king, man. I've read this comment and I've accelerated forward and I've dobbed it from like a 60. That is literally the seal up for our team off that comment. Like, guys, please, if you see me doing something in a game, please comment. And if you've watched to this far, Please just comment like go Lambros or Lambros or like I watched you know you know the whole footage or just comment anything like and you mean the world because I really do read your comments and I actually implement them into my game style like that comment literally could have won our team the game so thank you bro so much you are an absolute king and thank you guys for watching like this is just absolutely amazing you're running up Lambros so much finish the game with 31 disposals uh, eight marks 148 super coach points. And four pressure acts and one goal. Obviously, Tom Coffey loves the pressure acts. It got it up for him. Let's go, baby.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're with Lock Benton. Dominated today, best on. Mate, tell us about the day today. How did it feel out there? Well, obviously it was a uh, tricky conditions. Yeah, like a, probably the windiest game I've ever played in, except for the Cranbourne game last year. I would say you're probably our best four line player, and you're playing back today. But you kicked three goals, mate. Um, that's more than what you've been kicking playing in the four line. What's what's going on there, mate? Oh, because it was windy, I think you, it was easier to read. Um, <laughs> coming into the forwards, it would have gone over your head a few times. So, no, nah, it was good. Got, got in the end of a few. So, absolutely dominated, mate. And um, GWS Giants, you played in uh, BFL last, last year. year. Are you going to go yeah. back next year? Don't know. We'll wait and see. The dingoes, oh, I'm liking it here at the moment. So, <laughs> no, nah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Mate, you are a cut above this standard, and we love to have you. Can we get a good go, dingoes? <laughs> go, dingoes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, brother. Appreciate it. We got Mel's here. Mate, your first game in the seniors this year. Tell us how it went. Yeah, it was pretty good. A lot better than last time I tried to play seniors. It didn't last about 20 seconds, so survived the game, got the win. Just for some background, Mel's dislocated his shoulder, playing his first games of, game of ones, was it last year? Yeah. On this Same exact way. round, and he came back and uh, did well. Yeah, dominated. <laughs> <laughs> nah, under 10 and super coach, but um, I'll be all right. It was good, good fun. Beautiful, mate. I reckon the um, female audience is going to pick up after watching this interview. Uh, what do you think of that? Oh, I'm pretty keen for that. <laughs> Go Dingoes. Go Dingoes. Both game V. Another win for the Dingoes seniors, but mate, the 19s lost today. What happened there? Yeah, unfortunately, we got the loss. I was speaking to a few of the Bentley 19s um, behind the goals today as well. So if you were there speaking to me, drop a comment on the video. I would like to see it, but we're coming for you, boys. So watch out. <laughs> and um, yeah, to everyone, please interact with the video. We'd love to know where you play your local footy and um, yeah, like things like what you eat before the game and stuff like that. And over this week, we have got so many DMs like asking questions about footy and lifestyle and things. So just remember, we're friendly. We're going to, you know, hit you up, hit you up back and um, yeah, give you the best advice we can. Exactly right. We'll reply to all your messages as soon as we can. We are getting a lot, but we're happy to provide some advice to improve your footy. Perfect. And um, I am noticing winter is approaching and it is approaching fast. Um, we're kind of in the midst of it at the moment, but um, there's a lot of sloppy rigs around, Steph. What have you got to say for those? So I'm noticing a lot of boys are drinking beers, local footy. What more can you expect? Getting around your mates on the weekend. So I think the best advice for that is to jump on our website at Lambros Fit and buy yourself a program to avoid yourself getting a sloppy rig in winter because none of the ladies are going to like that sloppy rig. Let's be real. Easy, guys. Thank you so much for watching and dial in. Let's go. <laughs> It doesn't actually make shit. Or... Yeah.